All right, Adventure Cowboy, what do you got, man? All right, since we were just talking about movie guns, I figured I'd better go grab this one. This is an 1874 Sharps. I call this the rifle from down under. Now, some of you may recognize this rifle from the Tom Selleck movie. Quickly down under. I've seen that movie. Didn't he have an optic on it? Or, I mean, a, a sight? Uh, yeah. He had a tank sight. Yeah, a tank sight. That's what it was. Yeah, right. one day I want to have Yeah. Folds up right here. It's not on this gun. It can be bought separately. Yeah. We'll put it right on it. But it does have... It does have a ladder sight. Look how, look how high that elevation goes. I mean, that's like for shooting way out there. Well, I'm, right? I'll tell you a secret here on this one. <laughs> Let me find the spot. Okay. On, I have a sharp. So that's what's on my poster over here. That's what I hunt with yeah. mostly. The ammo that I'm using in my sharps right now. That elevation right there is 742 yards. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> that's <laughs> nuts. And uh, I don't have any experience with this. How do you run the action on this? How do you load it? How do you eject it? This is a breech loading rifle. Okay. So the rifle's already on half cock. Just Which is important. You don't want to open this with the hammer all the way down or it can damage the firing oh, okay. pin. The firing pin sticks out just a little bit on this block. So basically you just take this lever pull it down and it drops this falling block action which falling block actions are among the most rugged actions in the world now look at the ruger number one that's where it comes from okay so you just insert the cartridge there and now then, when you bring that lever down does it eject the yep, old cartridge yep and you'll see that right here there's your ejector yeah. you know what that reminds me of right it, it reminds me of an artillery piece it kind of looks like an artillery piece well yeah. <laughs> It acts like a smaller one. version. Of it. <laughs> um, so anyhow, then you close the breech and show him the set hammer. trigger. Yeah, absolutely. So these sharps are equipped with set triggers. Now on my specific sharps, I can speak to the weights. If you just wanted to run the front, this is your firing trigger right here. This is your set trigger. If you just wanted to run it without setting it, it's about eight pounds. If you set this trigger. You just squeeze this back and you can see that little click now it's super light mine mine How is, light is um, 16 ounces on my gun wow. you can that get it down less than that or you just you barely touch it and it goes off and that's what kind of application was accuracy. That? Hunting? Hunting? accuracy I mean this is these are the things the buffalo hunters were using to wow. kill buffalo from Eight, nine hundred yards away. So that ensures that that sucker, that rifle's not going to move at well, all. It's got a, this it. is it's either a thirty-two or a thirty-four inch Th barrel. Thirty-four on the quick. Okay. Yeah. So this is a thirty-four inch barrel. So you got wow. plenty of weight. And then, you know, with that light trigger. Nice. It's like an he, anchor. He's a big guy. He can hold this gun. I have a hard yeah. time holding this yeah. gun up. It, it looks normal to... on you. But if I held that thing, it would look like, uh, yeah, it would look like a howitzer on it. A lot of the buffalo hunters had cross sticks uh, yep. that they would rest the barrel on. Yeah. yeah, from a sitting position. I do a lot of my stuff. I like standing on pen shots. Uh, my gun is actually the Billy Dixon model, which comes with a 32-inch barrel. So a little bit shorter barrel, but otherwise it's pretty similar. Um, the Quigley does have a patch box on it. Can you flip it over on the other side and see how... Oh, that's a. I'm assuming that's a sling mount, right? It's kind of like a saddle ring. Saddle ring. Oh, yeah. okay. I think that's what they call it. It's a saddle ring. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's a cavalry thing that cavalry used yeah. to run those on. Now you, you're 4570. Yeah. Yours. Yeah. And then, how much would something like that go for? The Billy Dixon, I believe. I don't know the actual cost on ballpark. Right just ballpark price. Ballpark. You're probably looking at twelve, thirteen hundred. Oh, okay. Billy Dixon. Okay, nice. I could be right. Is that in the ballpark? It's, uh, it, it depends on who makes the gun. Oh, Since okay. Petter Solid makes ours, yeah. and they are primo, they've got really, really good barrels, which is extremely important in shooting. Uh, the Billy Dixon retails 2400 uh, And I bought my gun 10 years ago. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, dealer is, you know, considerably less, but you're going to end up spending probably at least 2000 for a Pedersali. Yeah. Now, there's other sharps companies out there, but Pedersali is right up there with the top. Oh, okay. Awesome. Uh, this so, what are we looking at here? This is the 1873. Okay. What, is this your antique finish again, or what, what yes, did you call exactly. it? Yes, exactly. Original finish Original or antique finish. finish. This one happens to be a carbine, 19-inch round barrel carbine. So they consider 19 inches a carbine? 
Well, it's not really the, the, the length, although carbines, for the most part, are shorter. It's the round barrel and uh, the style. The carbines have a barrel band here with either with the sight on it here or the sight could be on the barrel on some originals, but they have the barrel band here and they have a band around the stock. Uh, what would be considered a rifle are usually octagonal barrels, although they were also round barrel back in the day. And they'll have, as you can see here, the difference, a, a, a cap on the fore end. And show the buttstock on that one too. The buttstocks vary. You have a little bit of a flatter one on the carbine and a oh, crescent on the rifle. Okay. And of course, the rifles can also come with a pistol grip. Nice. So, so we're looking at a ballpark price of how much on these? Uh, retail it runs in the like 12 to 14 range okay see these are over a thousand dollars to get into these for sure that's okay. correct it, it uh, an 1866 yellow boy back here is and a little less you know maybe a hundred dollars or so less like uh, you know there it, it just it depends again on on you know the ex which exact one but these run about a hundred less than the, than the 73s now historically it was the 1860 Henry, then the 1866 Winchester, which Winchester called this the improved Henry. Because the Henry you had to load from this end and it had no wooden forend. So the barrel would get hot, uh, there was a spring was exposed here and so dirt and stuff could get in there. Here's a Henry. Oh, oh I see what you're saying now, how here. that could get hot, yeah. And if, showing the bottom of it see the spring in there it's and exposed. this follower because you load it down at the end so this oh, follower every I time see. you shoot it moves down a little so you got to so watch you, out for that you've got to move exactly so you, you can't wrap this hand. with leather or anything because that's going to move yeah correct so you got to improve it this that. was this was the improvement oh, now nice. this on these barrels on the 66 and 73 we have printed on here king's patent improvement you probably can't even see it it's very small but it's King's Patent Improvement, and then it has the patent dates. The original Winchester, 1866 and 1873s, had those markings. Now, other people who import these guns, they don't have that marking, but we want them to be as authentic as possible. So we pay a little extra, you know, to have that marking, since since that is our niche, you know, the authenticity factor. Now, before you go on that, I have a, I don't know if this is a stupid question, but is that brass? Yes. Okay. It, back in the day, it was called gun metal. It was a like a brass bronze alloy, okay. and I couldn't give you more detail on what that alloy was, but yes, it is brass. So that's a solid chunk of brass? It's a solid chunk that's oh, okay. been machined out. Oh, okay. the, the guts of this, the action, the, it's a toggle link action, is the same as the Henry, the same as the 73, oh, okay. but uh, the frame itself is different. So this gun, back in the day, the Henry and the 1866 were in 44 rim fire. Oh, okay. That ammo doesn't exist today. If, if you had some, never it heard would of be yeah. extremely expensive. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, you, you wouldn't be able to shoot an original if you had it for the most part. Gotcha. And, but these are all chambered, you know, in our modern cartridges. 38 special, 44, 45. You know. uh, gotcha. And it's, it's a pretty good. It's Very just cool. it's not quite as strong as the 73. All right. Very cool. There's something I've never seen before. What movie is this from? This was in Crossfire Trail. Crossfire Trail. Okay, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen yeah. that one. It's a, this is a Look Centennial model. So it's got a really long handguard yeah. on it. It's there. an 1876 Winchester. This some there was an 1873 Winchester that was made that had a long stock like this, a full length stock, and it was called a musket. Well, some people call this a musket, but actually Winchester called this a carbine, a 76 carbine. That's just, that's what they called it, and so that's what it is. Nice. And it, the Centennial model, because it came out in 1876, so... Yeah, if, uh, if you don't Selleck understand why that's yeah. a Centennial, you need to go take a history class. Yeah, yeah Tom Selleck <laughs> used that gun in yeah. the movie uh, Crossfire Trail. Crossfire now, Trail, I gotta watch that. It was an excellent movie, it was a made-for-TV movie. Oh, okay. Very good. And actually, there were no reproduction 76s when that movie was made. Yeah. So it was an original that they were using. Oh, nice. This was, 
It looks big for one. Been in, it uh, looks huge. Tom Horn, I think it's the Steve McQueen movie. Tom Horn. Mm -hmm. Okay. He used a '76 Centennial model in forty-five sixty. So That's there's nice. another movie gun for you. Very cool. Awesome. So the gun I showed you earlier, the Model 71 that had the 1886 action, that came after this. And this was the big bore gun of its day. But due to overall length, you can't put a 4570 in this action. So John Moses Browning came up with a better mousetrap. So his action is shorter, but you can put a long cartridge in it. Very but cool. like this is 4560. Uh, the one next to it is 5095. And it comes at 4575 as well. These are all the original calibers. Yeah. This that gun we don't make in any other caliber than the ones that were originally done. So you you definitely have to be a reloader oh, okay. to, uh, to shoot those because if you can buy some of that ammo, it's extremely pricey. Nice, nice. That looks like a beast right so there. So since I just did a review of this on my YouTube channel, oh, yeah. I just wanted to show you this. This is probably the most modern gun that someone has in their collection. So, what's this model called? This is the Model 71 Auxilla Killer. Auxilla Killer. Yeah. It's, uh, I told you we have to have a, a nickname for all of them. <laughs> yeah. It's a 19-inch barrel, 4570, um, and it's a reproduction of the Model 71 Winchester, which was made from the 1930s to the 1950s, um, and was probably the most popular lever hunting rifle made for a long time. The original was chambered only in the 348 Winchester. The Cimarron has bought it, brought it back and put it in a 4570, which you can buy 4570 anyway. Uh, probably the most versatile box made to light cowboy loads all the way up to really heavy loads that you can take elephants with. Wow. This is a Peter Solly made gun as well. Yep. And, and for the purists who don't really want the you know fiber optic side and the side rail on top, which are very handy. But people that want you know more old style, we've got it in in the standard uh, old type sides. So. Yeah, this is just a modern modern gun that is great for hunting applications. I was just going to scout scope on. I was just going to say for a guy like you that's on a horseback deep in the backwoods. You probably want the shorter barrel with the optic, right? I actually, personally, I like long, I have that sharps around. Oh, you do I, long barrels as well. Most guys that use these guns prefer something more carbine length. I mean, you hear the term guide gun. Uh, guys in Alaska are carrying rifles just like this because they can get into that brush country with the grizzly bears. Nice. And this is an awesome option if you're looking for a hunt rifle in 4570. Nice. Phil Spankenberger, a well known gun rider, took one of these guns on a safari in Africa a few years ago. Nice. Um, Very ballpark good. price on something like that? I know this is higher end, this so it's probably going to be retails for $1,800. Oh, okay. Uh, you can probably pick it up for less than that. But right, the retail is 1846. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, little, it's funny, um, I just shot my very first uh, 40, was it 4570? Yep. Um, on Monday. First time I ever shot one. Range yeah. day. On range day, yeah. Um, how's your shoulder feel afterwards? <laughs> yeah, I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Those That's guys like weren't under guns back then. They had yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, they had some firepower for sure. Right on. And this, so this action is based on John Moses Browning's 1886. Essentially, it's the same action. It is. It's exactly the same. So, um, it's got these two big, massive locking lugs on either side of the lever, and as the lever comes forward, it fits in these, uh, it's like a mortise and tenon. But the interesting thing about that is, prior to this design, the lever actions, in order to shoot a cartridge, you know, like the 4570, which is long like that, the action had to be so long. So. In order to make a hunting rifle, you know, a large caliber rifle with, that could handle the large cartridges, he came up with this design. And it is the 1886 design from John Wilson Browning. But yeah, Winchester made this as the Model 71 in the 30s. Very nice. So I showed you the Hogzilla. 
which is a Model 71. Um, this is a Model 71, more authentic to the original, um, as far as the configuration. So it doesn't have the Picatinny rail or any of that stuff. So the other one was modernized, and this is classic. Yep. Very nice. And, and this one, it's besides pretty. 4570 availability, is available in the original 348 that the 71s were made in. A lot of people really like that 348, so we have this in, in that caliber as well as 4570. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> All right, guys. That was probably the most comprehensive video that I've ever done at SHOT Show. Thanks to the guys at Cimarron, Dave and Clayton. Awesome booth review. I, I can't thank you guys enough. Thank you so much for the education. It's fantastic. Good to see you. And Thanks before we by. go, before we go, let's just give one more shout out to who you guys are. Clayton Marcher, otherwise known as the Adventure Cowboy. You can see me on YouTube. Dave Harper, otherwise known as Abilene when I'm dressed this way. <laughs>